Hey everyone, in this beginner's tutorial we're going to take a look at the basics of the camera in iClone 8. You'll learn about basic movement, switching, as well as a few basic features that will be useful in any project. You'll be using the camera a lot in iClone, so it's a good idea to get used to the hotkeys. The camera movement tools are found at the top toolbar. More often than not, you will have your selection cursor toggled to select and modify objects in your scene. So instead of using these buttons, it will save you tons of time to learn the camera movement shortcuts. Also note that holding shift while using any of these movement tools will speed it up. You can also zoom by scrolling your mouse wheel or holding alt and both mouse buttons. Holding shift while zooming will give you a faster zoom. To pan, you can hold the alt and use the left mouse button. Holding alt and the right mouse button will orbit. If you don't have an object selected, then your camera will orbit around the scene root. However, if you have an object selected, it will orbit around your selected object. Let's toggle the select cursor now and review the hotkeys. Again, Alt and right mouse button will orbit, which is different based on if you have an object selected or not. Alt and left click will pan, and scrolling the mouse wheel or holding Alt and both mouse buttons will zoom. Okay, let's look at how we can create recordable cameras and switch them in your project. You can bring in a new camera from the Create menu at the top. We'll choose a linear camera for now, and you'll see it appear with a default camera name in the camera drop-down list. You can double-click it in the Scene Manager to rename it. The preview camera cannot have movement recorded and is mainly used to navigate your scene quickly and freely without worrying about inadvertently recording your movement. When we do so, you can see the dummy for the camera we just created. There is also a camera object switch button at the top which toggles between the last selected object and camera. You can also use the U hotkey to toggle back and forth. With the camera selected, you'll have a number of different focal length presets you can choose in the Modify panel, as well as a slider to adjust it manually. Further down on that panel, you'll find the Depth of Field effect. When you activate it, you'll want to click on Pick Target, and then pick the focal point for your camera. In this case, it's the head of our robot here. We can click on View DOF Regions to see the red areas that have a strong focus, while cooler colors like green and blue will be increasingly blurry. There's also an Ignore Background option that will generally cause the edges of your focused object to be a bit sharper and more defined. To make minor tweaks to your camera position and rotation, you can use the transform values in the Modify panel. That's the very basics of camera functionality. Now let's look briefly at some camera animation. With most animation workflows, you'll want to open up the timeline. You can also use the F3 hotkey. You can find all of the separate tracks for your scene elements from the button at the top left. Here I'm just bringing up a track for the camera I created. You can click and drag through the timeline at the top and use the various zoom commands including fit to window. If I have my custom camera selected and I zoom in at this frame 239, it will create a keyframe in the transform track of my camera, which will mark a destination point for the movement. In fact, anytime you move your camera at a separate frame, it will record that movement via a keyframe in the transform track. You can click and drag through the timeline to see the results, and you can tweak the timing of the camera movement by moving the keyframes as well. You can add as many keyframes as you want here, but be aware that too many keyframes can result in short, jerky movements which may not be ideal for your scenario.
Okay, finally let's take a look at using multiple cameras and switching them throughout the project. Here I have three separate cameras in my scene manager. You can add these all to the timeline simultaneously by selecting them using the object menu at the top left. However, there's also a useful little option called Object Related Track, which will only show the tracks for the object you currently have selected in your scene. When you're working with multiple cameras, it sometimes helps to have all of the tracks showing simultaneously to compare the movement timing for each. You also have the mini viewport, which can be toggled using the F8 hotkey. I'll resize it a bit and hide the main play bar to give us some more room. You can select any of the cameras for a preview in the mini viewport, which is helpful when you're managing multiple cameras. If we select the switch camera option, then we can open up the switcher track under project in the timeline to determine which camera perspective will show at which time. Simply right click on a frame in the switcher track and select your camera from the camera list. I can then select camera 02, scrub down the timeline to a frame that I think is suitable for that angle to be shown, then right click in the switcher track and select it. This will add a little keyframe, and when we scrub through the timeline, we can now see the switch on our mini viewport. We can then go further down the timeline and select camera 3. You'll also want to be aware that the physical camera dummies will show up in your viewport unless you hide them via the scene manager. If we play back with switcher mode selected, you'll see the final results. That's all there is to camera basics in iClone. We have more detailed tutorials for more advanced functionality, but for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.